In this video, we're going to go into a few more features about import sets. If you haven't watched the previous video in this series, I recommend you watch it to become familiar with import sets, data sources, and transform maps. These are pretty big topics, so I'm breaking this into three smaller sections to keep it from getting too long and to make it easier for you to reference specific pieces later. In this video, we'll cover data sources, the next video goes into the details around transform maps, and the one after that covers transform map field mapping. Now you may have noticed that the examples used for the import sets are using Excel spreadsheets. Regardless of the data source, most of the import set concepts are the same. I'll point out exceptions where spreadsheets differ from other data source types. Here's our requirement for this video. Our communications team has asked that we import the spreadsheet comdevices.xlsx into the CMDB table cmdbci.com. However, when we compare the spreadsheet with the values in the choice fields, we notice there are some differences that need to be accounted for. If we just import the spreadsheet the way it is, the system will automatically create new options in those fields to account for the values in the spreadsheet. This could lead to data inconsistency, confusion, and poor reporting. Unlike the previous video where the system built the data source for us automatically when we did the load data page, we're going to do everything by hand to really understand what's going on. First, we'll navigate to System Import Sets, Administration, Data Sources, and click New. The data source defines the what and how we will be importing. This includes the import set, formats, protocols, and credentials if needed. We'll give the data source a name, communication devices, the import set table a label, import comms, and choose Excel as our file type. We'll tell it to use the data on sheet number one and header row one. Next, we'll save the record and attach the spreadsheet to this record. Let's pause a moment and look at some of the other options on the data source. Under the Type field, if we select JDBC, it changes the form layout accordingly. We would use JDBC to connect to a JDBC-compliant database like MySQL to retrieve records. The MidServer field is used if our database is behind a corporate firewall. We'll talk more about the MidServers later. For now, think of it as an agent to help us access on-prem resources. The format is one of these popular database formats. If we do a JDBC connection, we may need to talk to our database administrator to get other field values like database name, port, username, password, and more to set up the connection properly. Now let's change the type to LDAP. This stands for Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. As an example, we may want to import our user and group information from our Active Directory server using LDAP to allow users to sign in with their familiar login and password without having us to set up a single sign-in identity provider. The LDAP target allows us to select a record from the LDAP OU definitions table. Similar to JDBC, we would work with our administrators to understand which OU, server, and other parameters are required if we need to fill that in. The type OIDC indicates we're using an OpenID connector such as Google or Amazon to act as our identity provider. If we've configured an SSO provider to use OpenID, the system will automatically create a data source configured with type OIDC that we can modify later if needed. Choosing the type REST Integration Hub allows us to select a REST web service action to do our import for us. Commonly, Integration Hub actions would be used in flows built with Flow Designer. However, we can use them as data sources and server-side scripts too. The REST type also exposes the format field to help the system understand the format of the incoming data. We'll talk about these options in an upcoming episode. The Data Stream Integration Hub option is similar to the REST Integration Hub option, but uses a data stream action to retrieve large payloads, say greater than 10 megabytes, continuously and it implicitly uses pagination to retrieve the data in a continuous stream. This is more efficient for the remote system and for your instance when large amounts of data are being transferred. Choosing the data stream type gives us two options. We can either create individual fields on the import set based on the JSON format, 
or put each record's JSON information in a data field and we can act on it in the transform map. And of course, if we choose data stream integration hub as a type, we need to select which data stream. Note that both the rest and data stream options require integration hub licensing. If you have questions about licensing, please consult your account team. The final option is to load the data from a custom script. This obviously requires you to write some JavaScript, and it isn't used all that frequently in my opinion, but it allows you to specify how the data is retrieved and stored in the import set table. The focus of the data loader script should be to simply retrieve data and store it in the import set table, not manipulate or transform it. Leave that to the transform map. We'll get to that soon. Let's go back to the file type and check the options we have with that. The format field has several to choose from, each with its own sub-options. For our case, we chose to use the file attachment option, but we could have also used FTP, HTTP, or several other similar methods. Again, we would need to get server and credential information from our respective administrators to use these other methods. For now, it's enough to recognize that we have a lot of options to choose from when configuring a data source. As we build our data source, it's a good idea to test load to create an import set table and validate our raw data can be read. After all, just because a file ends with .xlsx doesn't mean it's really an Excel file. We do this by clicking the related link Load 20 Test Records. The screen should look very familiar if you watched the previous video. It indicates that the records were imported. If we have an error, we want to correct that before continuing. In the section marked Next Steps, the link Import Sets brings us to a table of import sets related to this data source. Since this is the first time, we'll only have one record. However, if we ran this import several times, there would be an entry for each time the spreadsheet has been imported. The State field tells us that the data was loaded, and opening the record can give us a few more details. We can also see this table from System Import Sets, Advanced Import Sets. And here's a handy tip. Rather than re-import all the data from our data source over and over, possibly taking time and money, we can open a processed import set and use the reprocess UI action to change its state back to loaded. This may be helpful as we develop and debug transform scripts. Back on that status page, we can also take a look at the actual import set records that were imported. This is a good time to ensure that the field types and lengths from our sample data will hold up for the rest of our import. Let's say we've imported people, and our initial 20 records never got an address longer than 15 characters long. The system will default to a minimum of 40 characters, and that's as much room as we'll have to store any subsequent data in that field. And then later, we come along and import 1,500 users. One has an address longer than 40 characters. That's going to be truncated. Let's open up one of the import set records for our communications devices. Like earlier videos, the system makes some assumptions based on the data in the spreadsheet, so you won't see choice fields and reference fields here, mostly strings and dates. When we right-click on the name label and select show you underscore name, we can see it's a string of length 40. That should do it for us. If we need to, we can always right-click and choose configure dictionary to adjust the field length up. This is only needed on string fields. Remember, once we increase a field size, we can't reduce it later. Okay, that takes care of the options for the data source and doing a sample import. We'll click this link and continue developing the transform app in the next video.